The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome to today's coaching session with your host, Craig Proctor. Well, thank you very much, Andrea. Uh, welcome, uh, coaching members. Uh, today, we've, uh, we've got some interesting uh, things to talk about, uh, to share with you, and uh, it's my great pleasure to, uh, to introduce our Internet experts, our um, uh, people that we've worked with now for uh, almost 20 years, um, Mr. Steve Rate and Christy Fillion uh, onto the webinar here. Uh, how are you guys doing? Excellent. I'm doing very well, thanks. Happy to be here. Okay, so our purpose of our call here today is to give you some clarification. We're going to talk about some things that are new. We'll talk about things that aren't new, but perhaps things that you misunderstand uh, to give you some more clarity on how uh, you can make a lot of money doing exactly uh, what I did using the same tools and doing what our most productive members are doing when it comes to uh, Internet lead generation. So, um, Steve, uh, you put together a wonderful presentation. Uh, I'm going to throw it over to you to get started. Okay, awesome. Well, what I've done is I've, I've put together a page that sort of summarizes the, the steps. Um, so if, if everybody wants, you can download this for yourself. You can print it out. If you just go to successwebsite.com forward slash coachingcall.htm, and that's the page that I've got up, up showing right now. And there are some resources in here, and I am going to get to those. But the, the main part of what I want to do is walk through the steps in order, sort of one, two, three, four, five, um, that generally sort of mirrors what, what you and me, Craig, did originally with your site and sort of how the, what the progression is to get it all set up. Um, it, it can be a little daunting. We understand that. And if you try and set up a branded site, an unbranded site, and a listing portal, and get Facebook going and Google going and all of these things, it can be quite overwhelming, intimidating, and there, there really isn't. It, it's really easy to get stuck. So what I what I want to do is sort of give everybody sort of the overview of where it goes, and then people can figure out either by calling us, um, by walking through. Um, where they fit in, what step they're on, and can start working through this as they progress through the coaching program. And hopefully by the time you get sort of to the end of the coaching program, you've got the core of this, all these, the main steps down. So you've got a consistent lead flow coming from multiple sources, multiple campaigns, and, and you've got that system in place that all supports what you're doing with the coaching program. Now, well, that's, that sounds fantastic. Um, uh, we we want to make sure that we do have an opportunity to get all your uh, questions answered as many as we have time for. So uh, throughout the webinar, yeah, just type in your chat questions. Uh, we'll take some audio questions if we have a chance at the at the uh, end of um, our webinar. But that is something uh, that we hear quite often: is hey, I'm overwhelmed. I don't know where to start. There's so much to do, and we don't hear that from everybody because you know realtors come to us with uh, different levels of. Uh, experience when it comes to online marketing, but Christy, I'm, I'm sure um, you um, get sort of the same questions asked over and over again. There's, I mean, you'll get, you know, the odd question that perhaps you've never heard of before, but in general, it's the same thing that we're hearing over and over again, so um, um, you're going to be able to add some great insights because you kind of already know what everyone's thinking. Yeah, I get that a lot. Uh, when people just get started, they say, gosh, there is a lot to learn. <laughs> And I say, yes, there is, but you don't have to learn it all at once. You know, you can take yep. baby steps. So that's what we're trying to step you through today. Okay. Yep, awesome. exactly right. Like Rome, Rome wasn't built in a day. So you're, you're not going to, uh, very few people are, are going to, to get this up and like implement everything. So we're going to break this down so you, you can understand where, your most le where most of your leverage is going to be with this and start with those things first. Right. So Christy's going Christy's to monitor the, the question room. So if you've got questions, don't feel free to ask them as, as we go. Um, she'll do her best to answer as many as possible as soon as you give them so she can keep you up to speed or get, get things moving. And then we'll try and take a bunch at the end as well. Um, we'll get, maybe we can get Christy to give us the best questions or the, most, the ones that are asked the most so we can get to those key questions. And again, maybe we'll be able to take some live as well. Okay. So... Let's get into this. So I, the, the page, again, if you go to coaching, successwebsite.com, coachingcall.htm, you'll get this whole step-by-step -step progression, um, a rollout, if you will, of the, the, how, how you can progress through it. 
Now, I have also included some resources in here. Um, the first is blueprint.pdf. Um, the blueprint gives you a bit of an overview of the entire site, and I'll, I'll get into that a little bit in the next little bit. Um, the second resource is a campaign planning checklist. Uh, so the campaign checklist.pdf. What that does is walks through setting up a single campaign. So if you want to set up your first campaign, uh, which landing page you should use, which media you should choose, um, how you set it up, how you track it all, and that walks through that step. So I'll, again, I'll come back to that one as well. Um, successwebsite.com slash HDX. That's when we get to the stage of wanting to set up your own custom listings portal. And we can talk about that. But again, there's more information on that there. And the last one is SMS sign riders, um, if you're using that to help leverage your listings. But I'll, I'll get to all those. But all of those are worth looking at. The PDFs are worth printing out to keep as a resource. And what we wanted to do was not only give you sort of the step-by-step, the, the -step, but also put some supporting material behind that so that there's some extra depth. If we don't get to everything on today's call, and we won't, at least you'll have have some extra things you can look at to really get focused on what you need to do. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention is there is the uh, a couple of resources that you do have. Um, one is that we do one-on-one -on -one action calls with you. So if you are got your success website, no matter where you are in the process, if you're just getting your site set up or you've just set up an unbranded site or you're just setting up your first campaign, or you've just set up your um, your Google pay -per click or we're doing that, managing that for you. Um, we do one-on-one -on -one action calls. You can book those calls um, by calling our regular number, 1-800-361-9527, extension 1200, and we will book those calls with you um, to help you get get on track. Whatever Wherever you are in the process, we can do that. So don't, don't forget that resource is available. The other thing is, if, if you go into your log into your command center, there is a, and you do that by going to yourdomainname.com, whatever that domain name is, your main domain name, forward slash the word control, and that will take you to the main command center. Now, the command center has lots of stuff in there, and I know we do a bunch of um, additional training and webinars. Kirsty does the jumpstart training. But the one thing that you need to be aware of is the learning tab. And Christy does, does a regular weekly webinar where she'll walk through a lot of this beginner material, so the, the basics of Internet marketing, um, how the Internet fits in, how my branded is different than less branded, uh, how to use different media, whether it be classified ads, uh, how to leverage your listings, all the things that fit in with listings and text messaging and all the things for sign writers, uh, search engine marketing, Google marketing, Facebook marketing, uh, using your affiliates, all of those things. There's lots of information in the, in the Jumpstart um, Learning Center, which is part of the Command Center. And then Christy does a regular weekly webinar that goes into one of these modules each week. So, uh, Christy, when when is that when is that webinar scheduled? Just so everybody, it's every Thursday from three thirty to four thirty Eastern time. Okay, and then you roll through, you quickly roll through each you roll through each one of these modules each week. Is that generally we what, do. what you do? Yep, we roll, we we cover the topics a little more in depth, and of course, take questions. So, if there's something that you really need answered or extra help with, you can always get on one of those webinars and ask. Uh, we also have Dave, who is um, helps out with the Jumpstart webinars as well, and he's he's sort of behind the scenes answering questions. So it's it's a great resource for people who need a little extra help or want to learn more about marketing their websites. Right, and those those webinars you can see they're rec they're rec a lot of those are recorded, and so if you, you miss one, you can always go back in and. And, or if you can't make the next one coming up, you can you can see a lot of those recorded webinars as well. Yeah, so we I, also we also use a great system that will email you a link to the recording right after the call. So even if you're signed up for the webinar and you can't make it at that time, 
you will receive an email after the call is done with a link to it. And it's a temporary link. It's only available for about 48 hours. But instead of having to log in and get into the Learning Center, you could just click on the link from that email and watch the recording from there. Okay, that's great. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, anyhow, like I said, so the, the main, like, it's probably taking a lot of time up here, but I want to make sure that everybody realizes all of these resources are available, all the things we're going to talk about today. Um, there's lots of different ways to get the information. If we don't go into it in enough depth now, um, lots of ways, whether it be the Learning Center or some of these resources, the links I've provided, as well as those one-on-one -on -one action calls. Okay, so let's let's get into sort of the meat of the call. Now, the the place to start probably is the um, the document I provide, the Internet Marketing Blueprint, and I'm just going to let me bring that one up. I've also posted a link to that page in the chat section. So if anyone wants to bring up that site that Steve was looking at, uh, just go down to the chat section. There's a link to it there. Okay, awesome. So the um, – let me just – okay. So the, the blueprint document, basically what this is, it walks you through, gives you a, a pretty good idea of the um, – let me just see if I can get the size here. Okay. Um, basically, it gives you sort of an overview of the entire system. Um, so generally, what we're looking at is – um, there, there's three core things you need to do as part of setting up your – developing your website. Um, you need to be able to attract people to the site. You then have to use the, the different sites and different landing pages to capture the visitors, get their contact information, so then you can follow up with them. And then we want to – basically, the site will then automatically follow up or help you follow up in terms of delivering a report that's been requested or um, property information they may have requested. And then, obviously, we want to follow up with the – universal callback script, and also we plug them into a drip email system that will continually stay in contact with them as we move forward. So that's the, that's the core, and you can see that outlined in the, on the sort of the first page of the blueprint. Now, as far as developing your, your website goes, uh, one of the things that you have to remember when we're setting up our site is the, is the idea of what I call top visitor response. And that very simply is uh, what do we want people to do when they visit our, visit our site? So generally the, the, the ultimate goal for you when, within your site is we want people, we want people to identify themselves and at some level pre-qualify themselves that they're involved with – they're looking for something in real estate. And if we look at Craig Proctor's site, that Craig, which is the sort of the, the master site that we're, we're working from here, you'll notice that everything in the site is designed to – obviously, it's not going to be of interest to anybody that's not looking at real estate, so we're getting some pre-qualification. But it, everything in here has been designed to get people to leave their name. So if, if we look out, at, click on the link, find out what your home is really worth, you can see that the copy uses the process of sort of what I call tease, capture, and then provide access to the information. So you'll note, free you quick over the net home evaluation, find out what your home is really worth, and then we get them to fill, describe their home and provide us their contact information. And that allows us then to follow up. Now, similarly, if we go and look at a list of – free list of bank distress sales and foreclosures, again, we're going to get a custom list. We're going to maximize ch – choose the price range um, and work through, again, capture their contact information. So the same basic process of tease, capture, and then access to the site. Now, as you can see, the, the – the idea here is that all of these pages are designed to capture 
capture information, capture a type of lead. If they're filling out a home evaluation, well, we know they're the seller. If they're asking for a list of foreclosures and distress sales or a hot list or filling in the VIP buyer form or stop renting, we know that they're certainly interested in buying a home. So we do get that pre-qualification. But again, meeting our top visitor response, we want them to identify themselves we get them to do that by providing their contact information and then filling in the form. Then the game all becomes about how can we maximize the number of people that respond. And that's what the site has been completely designed to do. Everything, everything within the site, all of these campaigns were, were refined over years and years since Craig and I started working together and even before that, when some of this stuff was just, just on hotlines or running in newspapers uh, to a hotline ad. The idea here is that all of these campaigns have been continually optimized to maximize the number of people that, that respond, obviously to get the most leads, to get the most response from our, 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 our advertising. Now, one of the, the best ways to do that is and one of the, the most effective ways that we found is by using not only a branded site but a less branded site whenever we're generating leads. So by generating leads with a less branded site, um, the idea is that more people will leave their name. So if we look at the home of Val, there's no obvious Craig Proctor on that, or there's it's not obviously you. That information is, is down at the bottom of the page. It's just sort of minimized. Um, but the idea is more people will fill in the form, more people will get to the, the orange button that we want them to fill in um, if, if you use sort of a less branded site whenever we're doing, doing our advertising. Now, if you go back to the, uh, there's, there's a lot more information on this in the uh, blueprint document. Um, the blueprint, if we scroll down, you can see there's a lot of information about which campaigns, but it talks about when you would use the branded site versus when you would use the less branded site. Um, and it, it very clearly, when you're, whenever you're advertising, you want to use less branded. Whenever you're um, following up or whenever you're promoting yourself to a referral network or people that already have a relationship with you or want to refer you, Again, all of that should be done through your branded site. Okay. Now, at that point, the next step in the process is to, uh, to follow up. Now, I know Craig has probably by this point drilled it into everybody how important the follow up call is. Um, and maybe, maybe you could, you could just talk quickly about, about why that's so important, Craig. Okay, well, almost every realtor that starts with our, our program, uh, they make the same mistake of underestimating uh, the follow-up uh, or um, believing, falsely believing that just because you have the prospect's contact information, because you have their name and you have their email address, uh, that uh, somehow the prospect's going to contact you when they're ready to buy or sell, or that you can do all the follow-up through email. Now, once you talk to the prospect, the first time, of course, then you can email them and, and communicate with them by mail and by email. Understand that emailing the prospect and sending direct mail to the prospect, uh, that's, that is going to enhance your follow-up, but it's not going to replace the personal phone calls that you use to the pro use uh, when speaking to the prospect. You've got to use the universal callback script. Why? So you can ask the probing questions. Why do you want the, to ask the probing questions? Because you want to know the answers to those questions because that's going to help you determine the timing and motivation of the prospect. So if you don't speak to them, you can't use the script. If you don't use the script, you're not asking the, the probing questions and you're not determining their motivation and timing. And if the prospect answers the questions correctly, meaning that they're super motivated and they want to buy or sell now, you want to book an appointment. So... It's a misunderstanding, okay? It really is a misunderstanding, um, especially with uh, brand new members where, where they kind of believe that 
once they generate the lead, they can just, you know, send a bunch of emails out or mail them uh, their newsletter, and they underestimate the, the power and the importance of those personal calls. So all the other things that you're going to do in addition to the personal phone calls are just going to enhance the follow-up. For example, we know from direct mail studies that if you call around direct mail, it'll triple your response. So the, the physical phone calls that you make are extremely important. Now, most of you um, have to you know, you have to do a little bit of work to get good at this script. You have to understand the script. You have to believe in the script because it's very difficult to sell something that, that you don't believe in or something that you're not good at. So, Steve, you're absolutely right. Um, for most of our members, generating leads is the easy part. It's the follow-up that they sort of mess up because um, they don't really understand the process or, you know, frankly, some of some of our members are just a little bit lazy with that part of it. And um, without getting that part right, um, well, you know, generating the leads is a waste of time if you don't do the follow-up part correctly. Yeah, well, I, I always, I know I've told you this story before, and this is going back a few years, but we had a guy that regularly would generate hundreds and hundreds of leads every month. And he would never, at some point, I assumed that this guy was doing really well because he, because he was getting all these leads. And he worked and worked and worked at trying to perfect a magical email follow-up system that he would never have to call the people. And he worked at this, and he sent these people daily emails, and he tried did everything he could. But at the end of the year, I remember looking at his, at his sales, and the guy sold like three houses from generating hundreds and hundreds of leads. And it, it turned out it was because he never made the calls. And as a result, he thought all the leads were his, his excuse was all the leads are crappy. Well, in reality, was because he wasn't following the system, he wasn't using the script, he was just he was just really good at generating leads. He'd have been far better just to refer them out to someone that would make the calls. Yeah, absolutely. Now, that is an extreme case where right, uh, the, mem the member generates hundreds of leads and doesn't call them. I would say more likely the situation is um, that our, our members do it haphazardly. You know, sometimes they do a pretty good job following up. Sometimes they don't. And in many cases, when they complain the leads are no good, consistently complaining, well, the leads are no good, usually the problem is in the mirror. They're just not, you know, following up religiously with the prospects, and they're not very good with the universal callback script. So um, that's why we, that's why every Thursday, every Thursday, uh, you know, all year long, Every Thursday, we are spending an hour and a half, James McDonald and I, um, helping pro um, our members with, with follow-up, understanding um, how to handle the most common objections, understanding exactly how to plus your follow-up so you're not losing this business that you've spent money to generate to your competitors. Right. And I, I think one of the things that we hear all the time is at some point with the, your coaching members, as they proceed through the program, at some point they do get the follow-up process, making the calls, and they understand that. And all of a sudden, the leads that we heard 60 days ago, where all oh, the leads aren't very good, now all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, the leads are pretty good. I'm, I, I've, I've clicked into this, and they because they're making the calls better, all the leads are better. They're not getting cut off as soon as they get. The guy well, well, let me let me system. let me share the eye opener. Uh, okay, I mean this was like a, a two by four hitting me over the head. Uh, when I finally understood how important the follow up uh, was, um, many years ago, um, like the guy that you just mentioned, I was generating lots of leads and um, was was frustrated because I wasn't making a lot of money. I wasn't selling a lot of houses, and your first instinct always is to blame the leads. But let's think about this. So here I was, I was getting hundreds of buyers and sellers to jump through all these hoops, go to my website, and leave their contact information. Now let's really think this through. Who would do that? Who would, you know, from print advertising or online, visit your website, uh, give up uh, all their contact information, um, and, and go through all these hoops, unless they were, you know, somehow, some way, motivated to buy or sell? Um, so here's what I did. To prove the point, uh, I, you can do this with sellers. All of you can do this. You can't do it with buyers because there's no MLS with, for buyers. But I took all my seller leads for the last six months, 
and I entered their addresses into MLS. And what I found is a extremely high percentage of the seller leads that I had generated had already listed, and some of them had sold with my competitors. So, you know, good news, bad news, right? The good news was, well, it sure told me that my lead generation system was working well. I was, in fact, generating some high-quality leads, but the bad news was my follow-up um, needed to be greatly improved. But at least I knew the problem. Now I could, I could take steps to, to correct that. And once I did, and you know, within that 12-month period, I actually doubled the number of homes that I sold without generating any more leads. And right. you know, we, we see members that are kind of lazy or kind of you know, not good with the follow-up part of it. And rather than fixing the problem, what they think is, well, I need to generate more leads. Mm -hmm. How about this? How about become better at follow-up so you could spend less, generate less leads, but sell more? Right. Yeah, now that all makes sense. Now, within the, within the website, there are a lot of tools. When you generate the leads, all of those leads go into the My Lead CRM. And you can get, certainly we're not going to have time to delve into that today, but certainly on the, the jumpstart calls that Christy does, she'll walk through how the, how the My Leads works, um, how you can see your leads, how you can see what they're looking at. But all of those leads get added automatically to um, one of the one of Craig's um, email follow-up plans, um, which will walk through, and it, it basically sends messages on your behalf, um, sort of drip messages to keep people interested, to support your calls, um, to keep people warm, um, hopefully at some level to bring some people back. Um, if they're set up for property notifications, so they're, it'll send them updates. So that that is one of the emails that works really well. Is um, in terms of here, you've got new properties to look at. So if they're an active buyer, they open those, they look at to see what the new properties are, and that is a good way to continually follow up and, and stay interested. But that's the that's the next step. So we've we've gone through the the sort of basic uh, three step, um, the first three steps of the process, and they're all pretty much included within what you get with a success website. So you've got a good direct response site. You're following the basic T's capture and access. We're able to track your leads. You've got the branded, unbranded. We'll begin. We'll walk through the tracking again in a minute. Um, and you've got the follow-up system to support it. Now you're basically ready to start running campaigns. And that's the that's where the where you really start to, to generate leads. So there, there is one of the, the, the third document that I provided to everybody on the call today is the campaign checklist. And, and this walks through, um, if you go, you can print this out. This will walk through all the steps you need to follow. So you choose your target audience. Is it a buyer you want to target or sellers you want to target? Then you're going to choose a landing page. So which campaign? So is it going to be a, for, a list of foreclosure properties, a stop renting report, perhaps, if you're, if you're targeting buyers or sellers? Sorry, if you're targeting first-time buyers. Um, and then you're going to use, that'll determine what your landing page is. So in most cases, you're going to be able to, to find a campaign, buyers or sellers. Um, the, typically, the best campaigns to start with for buyers are your foreclosure list of foreclosure properties, fixers, uh, or your area hot lists. For sellers, uh, you're looking at an online home evaluation or find out what the home down the street sold for. Again, all of those are able to generate leads. So if you follow through the, the campaign checklist, it'll walk you through, okay, where, which, which campaign do you want to choose, um, which websites you want to choose, which pages you want to use. All the steps are there so of picking your campaign, um, making sure the landing page is right. Then we're going to choose our media. Okay, is it going to be, where are we going to run run an ad? Is it going to be a Google ad, Google pay-per-click? Is it going to be an online classified ad, a print ad, a postcard? Um, lots of different different ways to do that. So this document will walk you through the setup process of all the things you need to do to make sure your campaign is running. It'll show you how to get in to track my success. And, and track my success really is, 
you know, I, I've always said it's sort of the, the key to Craig's system. Um, and, and maybe maybe you could just sort of talk a little bit, Craig, about about tracking and how, how you started off doing tracking and how, how you realized how valuable that was. Well, look, I, I think this is the best part of my entire program is the fact that um, you get to know immediately what works and what doesn't work and where the best places are to spend your money. I mean, that's the, the real beauty of the program is there's no more guessing. There's no more wasting money um, long term on stuff that doesn't work. You would, you know, waste it once maybe, right, because you test something. If it doesn't work, that would tell my brain, you know, don't do that again. Right. So you should be all testing the different ads in the different mediums, you know, targeting different marketplaces. And I was, as you know, Steve, I was in the habit of every morning I'd grab my, uh, you know, send the kids out to school, grab my pot of coffee, uh, come down to my home office, and I would check the reports for both my uh, the website and the hotline. Right. And I would I would talk to Stephanie in my office. We'd look at, okay, well, here's the ads we ran over the last couple of days, and here are the results. Here's what we're not going to do anymore, and here's what we're going to do more of. Right. And um, the, the other thing that was really uh, interesting is – like, you know, you know how you said earlier, a lot of people get overwhelmed with this, and I think it's super complicated. Um, as you know, Steve, and, and Christy, as you, as you know as well, what I did was fairly simple. I was able to determine that like 70% of my sales came from the same few ads. So I did a few things very well over and over and over again. And most of our members, they don't understand that. They don't understand that I had this routine because once I figured out what worked uh, and I couldn't perfect it, I couldn't make it better, it just ran over and over and over and over again. So, for example, the postcards, I sent out, I tested a bunch of postcards. I determined which one worked the best. And then I started sending it out, uh, I think it was like 5000 a month. And then I went to 10000 a month because it worked so well. Then I went to 20000 a month. And then I went to 20,000 postcards every other month. And I did that for year after year after year after year. Um, that was a system. So Danielle at BXL, she'd print the postcards up. She'd actually send them to the post office for me with the, the, the proper zip codes. And that was one little system. I ran the online home evaluation ad in the local paper every single day. I ran the distress sale ad in the newspaper every single day. So I had this routine of stuff that worked. Now, here's the crazy part about this, is some of our members, even when they find out like what works best for them, they end up messing around with stuff that routinely work. You know, it's, it's surprising, almost every super conference, when I go through exactly what I did, I'll have a, a, a coaching member come up to me at the break and they'll say, you know, Craig, I used to do that. I used to send out the postcard just like yours, and I, you know, I did it every other week, just like you did it, and it worked really, really well. And I go, well, what do you mean you used to? And you can see the blank look on their face because they realize that they voluntarily stopped doing something that was working week after week. And really, if you, if you wonder, like, why is that? Why do we stop doing things at work? I believe it's because we as realtors become bored of our marketing long before the marketplace does. So can it really be that simple that – Here's what I would prescribe to all of you. You test a bunch of the stuff we give you. You find out what works the best, and you take the four or five or six things that work the best, and you just do it over and over and over again. This is why I call this automated marketing, because it can be automated. It can be that simple. Does everyone understand my marketing had nothing to do with me at that point forward? I wasn't running the ads. I had a schedule. With the newspaper, I had somebody that would post them on Craigslist. You folks were doing my Google pay-per-click at success. Um, it had nothing to do with me. When the leads, when the prospects would visit the website, the leads would go right to my assistant, Cindy. She would enter the leads into the contact management system. And if it was you know, a request for, like, a list of homes, she would send out the list. The only time I was involved was in actually making the follow-up call. Everything else was delegated. Now, as I progressed with this, I started to give away the appointments as well. I made more money on the phone setting up the appointments than I could actually going out to the appointments. Nobody seems to understand that. You know, in real estate, here's the crazy thing. 
we make our decision on how we're going to spend our time based on what we like to do. So many realtors are like, well, I like to mess around with paperwork. So you mess around with paperwork. Or I don't like to make the phone calls. So you don't make the phone calls. We've got to look at our business and we've got to make decisions not based on what we like, but based on where we make the most amount of money. Great. So what are the most dollar productive activities? Hi, Christy. Are you, fam are you familiar with the 80-20 uh, principle? In real estate, I think it's more like the 95-5. Yeah, because that's exactly what that is. You know, 20% of your marketing is going to yield 80% of the results, or as you said, 5%. So finding that, that ratio, finding that, that golden percentage is, is huge. And sometimes picking up the phone and making those calls, that is the 5% of your time that is going to yield 95% of your results. And, and this is why our members get overwhelmed, because they're running around trying to be good at 100 different things, and we, we got to narrow it down. Like, you take a look at Warren Buffett. Okay, Warren Buffett arguably is the greatest investor of all times. And I love the guy because he's modest and he drives like a used Cadillac and lives in like in a normal home. And he's like mm -hmm. the second most wealthiest guy in the world, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now his strategy, he has a very simple strategy when it comes to evaluating businesses and companies. And he uses that simple strategy that's used for years. Since it's not complicated, I look at a few things and I do this over and over and over again all day long. He's become really, really proficient with a very simple system that he does over and over and over and over again. Um, here's a famous quote from Bruce Lee, you know, the karate guy. Bruce Lee said, let me see if I can get this right. He said, I don't fear, okay, the fighter with 10,000 kicks. I fear the fighter that has done one kick 10,000 times. This is what we've got to understand. That's the ball game, is we cannot let the distraction of the new shiny object, i got to be good at this, I'm bored at this, what's the next thing, what's the next thing, what's the next thing. You know, a lot of guys that do seminars, that do what I do, and, and, and sell coaching to real estate agents, they feast upon realtors because of that. They know that real estate agents are attracted to the new shiny red hot button. So they never really offer you anything that's done, that's actually going to be finished. They don't want you to have anything that's done for you or finished because then they can't sell you the next thing. So their whole formula is always selling you the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. I, I've got to think that you guys are being tired are, are tired of continually looking for the next thing when you've got the thing right in front of you. This is right. the thing. Now, Steve, I don't know if you've got that PowerPoint slide you show at the super conference of my actual results. It was for the month of January, and I know you showed it at the last super conference. And if you have that, I don't know if you do, but it showed where all my leads came in. And clearly, you look at that and say, well, look it. This is where Craig generates most of his leads. The thing, the top five or six things uh, on the uh, Track My Success results, that's, what, that's where I should be spending my time. Uh, an example of that, and I, I believe it's on that uh, slide. Remember the banner ad I did, Steve, uh, with um, the local newspaper? They have uh, their own online newspaper. It's called YorkRegion.com. So the ERA banner, you know, they've got a, a newspaper, but they've got YorkRegion.com, which is the ERA banner, the local paper online. And I was offered in the real estate section, I could buy this banner ad uh, in the real estate section. So when people clicked on real estate and they clicked on new market, there was a little banner ad that said, um, uh, find out what your home is worth online. And people could click to that and go to the online page. Well, I called Steve one day when uh, I, uh, I first got that, and I was all excited. I said, hey, Steve, killer opportunity here. All this traffic's uh, going to be going to this website. And, um, well, there it is right there, right at the bottom. See, YRNG, York Region News Group banner ad, one lead. So here I am. I'm in love with this idea. I'm calling Steve. I'm convinced. And I probably tr convinced you, Steve, right? This is going to be a major opportunity. And I spent all this money on that banner ad right there. Right. And yeah, but the, the, the funny thing about it was the, and, and this was typically how the process would work, that we would run, you, you would run this ad, yeah, it's going to be great. And I remember going right away saying, okay, fine, I'll try it out. Looked at it, said, oh, it looks pretty good. 
And then, but you never know. A month later, we see the only lead was probably me filling in the form. Well, and that's the thing. Look, if if I don't know and Steve doesn't know, I'm going to assume that most of you that are fairly new at the program, you don't know until you test these things. And that's why I always say, people say, well, Craig, what do you think will work better, this or that? that?" The answer, it's not a cop up. We had had to compare this at at exactly the same time this was running with a guy named uh, Carl Traumler, who was in Arizona. And he ran a very simple little ad that was on the local, I think it was NBC affiliate in Phoenix. Yep. And it was just a three-line little, it looked like a little text link. And all it said was uh, Phoenix real estate information, click here. And that little link, just because of the where he got it positioned and the traffic he was getting from it, he generated all the leads he needed. He didn't need any more. So you really... Like it turns out, obviously, this page didn't get a lot of traffic, and they weren't promoting, whereas the NBC affiliate, the page he was on there, he figured out that the pages he wanted to be on there, what he didn't want to be on the home page. He wanted to have that link on the daily TV listings, the movie listings, and the weather page, because those were the pages people were going to. They weren't going to the home page, and he did, he did really well with it, but you don't know. That's the whole point, and whereas the... The uh, distress sale classified that you ran generated 173 leads in a month. Now, obviously, you're going to run that month after month after month. The uh, now, now here's the crazy home part. valuation postcard. Okay, so here's the yeah. crazy part. Go, go, uh, yes, Steve, can you hear me? Yep. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, flip back to the banner. Flip back to the banner ad for a second. The, banner the online ad. banner ad. Yep. Uh, yeah, on on, uh, on York Region News Group. Okay. Now that, how many of you would think, well, that's a sexy idea. That is cool. Um, classified ad in the newspaper, that's old school. That's boring. Uh, nobody reads the newspaper. You know, we're brainwashed on all this stuff, right? Now, here it is. Here's the ad in the local newspaper. 173 leads on that one. The sexy online banner ad, that's the same newspaper, but the online version, you know, we're all told. Get with it. You got to get with it. You got to get all this stuff online. Well, that was my reward. I spent way more money on the banner ad than the dumb, inexpensive classified ad, right? The old fashioned, dumb classified ad, 173. How about the postcard? Boring, right? Boring. Every other week, I'm sending out these postcards, 313 responses. Yep. Sorry, it's boring. So we have to decide whether we. You know, want excitement for the sake of excitement. Hey, if you want excitement, go see, I don't know, a scary movie. Right. Go drive a but race the real, car. The real beauty of this and the real beauty of your system is the fact that we know and that the tracking allows us to know. So that, like, if, if we didn't know, let's say we just we didn't know what our sources of traffic was and we, we were getting, what's this, well, almost 500 leads a month and we didn't know. Well, we may decide that that, Banner ad is we're gener- I've got a hunch the banner ad's the sexy one. It's the one generating all the leads. I can stop the postcards and I'll stop the classifieds and I'll find a couple more sites to put these sexy banner ads on. Oh, totally. If I hey Steve, if I didn't know the results, do you see how easy it would be for the rep at the at the York Region News Group website to say, oh, you know, you need to do this. This is a killer idea. You see. You say that quote at the conference all the time. You see, you know, the problem most agents have, well, most every advertiser has, is half their advertising works and half doesn't. That perfectly describes me. Earlier in my career, I was terrified to stop doing anything because, you know, what if that's the part that might be working? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a famous P.T. Barnum, the circus marketer, said, I, I know half of my advertising is working. I just don't know which half. And that's... That's the problem the tracking solves and why the tracking is so important. So when you set up your campaigns that by knowing the tracking, you never run into the problem of spending money. You might do it for a month. You might do it for two months. But you're not going to get fooled in this keeping running things that don't work. And you can funnel more money either, either into, like, what, what I know what you did. The next month, you came and said to me, okay, we've got the postcard working great. The classified's working great. I've got all this money that I spent last month on the banner ad. What can we do with it? Can we try something else? And the answer is, yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's a good point. Click. That's that's a really right? good point. Oh, that's Let's a good take point. that money and do Google Pay Per Click and see if that works. And yep. then, if, if, then the next month you'd see, okay, the Google Pay the Google Google Pay Per Click worked a little bit. 
you might say, okay, maybe we'll, let's, is there something we can do to fix that and make it better? So you're always month after month, you're always, at least some of your budget, you're, you're, you're continuing to do the things that work as you know they work, um, but you're always trying to add one more. And I, I think over the, over the 10 or 15 years that we were doing this, you always had 10 or 11 different things that you were trying. And maybe right, half, right, okay. of the, half of those each month might be new, but there was the consistent three, four, five things, these postcards and classified ads, and then eventually Google, and at some point Craigslist was working well. Um, but it changes. And even... Like if there was a let's say there was a month where the, the your postcards you, you forgot to send the postcards there was a printer problem or they didn't get delivered well you'd know right away well what happened to the, the, the you can't get fooled by the printer calling up and saying yeah we delivered them all well okay a couple a couple like things leads, a, a right? couple things a uh, couple things first of all you can see that. If you actually figured out what worked for you and you did it over and over again, uh, that you wouldn't, you know, that be, that builds uh, like a level of comfort in your life. It builds predictability. Like I would know every single month how many listings I'm going to take on from the postcards and how much money I'm going to make. How many of you would like to know that? How many of you would like to be able to eliminate all the crap that doesn't work? Focus on the stuff that does and know that if you just do these four or five or six things every single month, you're going to sell between five and 10 homes every single month from that or 20 and 30 homes. So that's what I liked about this is not only did I get rid of the wasted money, but it gave me control like of my income. The worst thing in real estate is not knowing how many homes you're going to sell every month, you know, and having that stress because the people you owe money to Guess what? They've got a system to get that money from you, right? Steve, uh, if you lease a car every month, that money's due, right? Okay, if you have a mortgage on your home every month. Every month, yeah. Right. Uh, your, your cell phone bill, all the, your, your kid's tuition. So we need to have predictability in our life, in our business uh, for these reasons. Now, one other point I want to make is um, go back to that online ad for one second. Okay. Before you eliminate a medium, and this is important, and, I, and I, as you were talking, I remembered uh, I need to, to clarify this. So it wasn't like I ran the distress sale ad and said, oh, hell, that medium doesn't work. I tested different ads. The other ad I tested was the, um, was the online home evaluation on, in that exact, if you can show that exact uh, slide again with the distress sale, the banner ad. So I'm going to test different messages before I eliminate a medium. So let's say I'm running something on Craigslist. I'm not going to run one ad on Craigslist that doesn't work, and I go, oh, well, Craigslist doesn't work. Or the distress sale ad that's on your screen right now, um, I'm not going to run that one day in the newspaper, and if it doesn't work, say, well, I guess the newspaper doesn't work. I'm going to run a whole bunch of different ads in that medium because I want to make sure that it might, you know, might be the message that's the problem. Right. So well, it don't could also be, in this. I remember in the case of this distress sale ad, you, you even experimented with different positionings in the newspaper. So it might be in the homes for sale section, but then you were trying it as remnant, remnant space ads. Maybe you can just tell, talk quickly about what the remnants, how the remnant space stuff worked. Well, what I found is some of the ads uh, worked well. Okay, some of the ads, here's where they didn't work well. The newspaper, when they see an ad like this, a lot of newspapers, they want to run this under real estate services. Look, there's no buyers or sellers looking under real estate services. These ads need to work, um, run under the classified section. But some of them work so well, like the distress sale ad, that I found that it worked well outside of the classified section, and I was able to negotiate for this extra space that the, all newspapers have. It's called remnant space, and I was able to get two-thirds off the normal line rate. So before, here's the moral of the story. Before you give up on a medium, before I give up on an, any newspaper or any online vehicle, any online medium, I want to make sure I test many different ads because it might not be the medium, it might be the message. But that being said, if I run a whole bunch of different ads or messages on Craigslist or on that um, as, as a banner ad on the, the local um, real estate website and I can't get it to work, the question has been answered. That doesn't work. That medium is not working. Despite me testing all these different ads, that's a waste of time. That needs to tell our brain, move on. Here's what's frustrating. On the ad clinic, Steve, 
Um, we'll have members that say, yeah, I've been running that ad. Um, it doesn't work at all, and I've been running it for six months. What? Look, at, this is why we call this direct response marketing. You should get an immediate direct response right away. Don't keep doing the same thing if it's not working over and over again. It doesn't take months to figure out something doesn't work. It, could, it should take days. Like if I run an ad on Craigslist, like if I don't get a response right away, where's that at? It's not on Craigslist in three or four hours. If I send out a postcard today and I don't get responses today or tomorrow, we can be pretty assured that postcard's in the garbage. So is the daily newspaper. Right. So, and the, this, the Google ad, you're running Google pay-per-click or you're running Facebook pay-per-click. Again, those, those media are, are certainly fairly quick. They may take a couple of days to get approved and get started, but when it starts, you should know in a few days. Well, I'll, I'll speak to that, actually, if, okay. if you don't mind here. Like Google, for instance, it does take some time for the campaigns to build a certain momentum. So you do have to give it, I would say, minimum two weeks if you're running an ad on Google. Yeah, and a, another, exception, another exception, Christy, might be if, I, uh, if I'm in a monthly Land and Homes magazine, okay, mm -hmm. a, a real estate book, Homes and Land magazine, a real estate book, a, a monthly publication, uh, it might have some shelf life. So, you know, I might want to give that a month. But clearly, for most of our, our marketing, it's like you're going to know that day. I run an ad on Craigslist or I run an ad on Facebook. Uh, if I uh, run an ad in the local daily paper, you know, I might get a few stragglers. Uh, same with the postcards. You know, I, I could get, if I send out 20,000 postcards, I could get a couple prospects that look at the online home evaluation and say, yeah, you know, I might, uh, I'm thinking of moving. I'll, I'll stick that in my refrigerator and I might respond to that in a week or two. But in general, most of your responses are going to come in right away. So here's the idea. This is what you all want to do. Uh, test. Look at the results. Tweak. Look at the results. Tweak. Look at the results. Keep tweaking, tweaking, tweaking until you either make it, you know, work. You, you um, What's the word I'm looking for? You optimize the response or no matter how much you tweaked it, you couldn't get the thing to work. What do you do then? Move on. Mm -hmm. All right. You know, what, okay, people sometimes look at this whole testing thing and – they get frustrated, like, oh, my God, you know, I've tested this and that and this and that. And I've spent all this money testing it, and a whole bunch of things that I tested didn't work. Guess what? Good news. How do you think they drill for oil? Do you want to know how they drill for oil? They drill and they drill and they drill and they drill and they drill, and they spend all kinds of money to find out there's no oil here. That's how they find out where oil is, by finding out where oil is not. That's the same thing we're doing here. We're drilling for oil here. Don't be upset or frustrated when something doesn't work because that tells you now what doesn't work, which is going to move you closer to what is. It's a process of elimination. Now, some of our members, they hit oil right away. And, I, of course, we love that, don't we, uh, Steve and Krista? We love it when we get a brand-new member and they run a bunch of ads and they call you guys up and go, oh, my God, this is awesome. I, uh, I generated 20 or 30 leads. I booked some listing appointments. That's easy. We, we love that. But mm -hmm. it's not like that for most of our our students. It's a matter of I got to drill for oil. I fail. I fail. I fail. Um, hey, what did Gary Keller say when he spoke at our conference a couple of years ago? He said, "I failed my way to success. How did I get to where I am today? By failing at a whole bunch of other things I tried until I figured out what works. That's what we want to be doing here." Yeah, yeah and do it quickly. Fail quickly. <laughs> fail <laughs> quickly. Absolutely. Don't take a long time to fail. Absolutely, yeah. fail quickly. Test it. That didn't work. Next. That didn't work. Next. You want to test, 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 and fail quickly at it. Don't take a month to fail. We don't have time for that. Let's let's fail at this as much as we can to figure out what is right. Right. So the so the the rest of the and I know we're we're coming up against our time here, but the the rest of the of the rollout that I'm going through outlines all the different sort of things you can try. In a, in a progression and sort of what the order would be, starting from do, doing the simple things first. So cross-promoting, um, putting some information on your, obviously your website, your stationery, your correspondence, your voicemail, listing signs, including a tagline. Give people a benefit to go to your website on all of these media. Then yeah, does everybody know what Steve, everyone know what Steve's talking about? You can't have on your business card, you know, uh, visit craigproctor.com. That, that would be like, um, 
having a billboard that had your phone number on. There's got to be a benefit, a reason why the prospect should go to your website. So um, uh, everything that you have right now should have your USPs. It should have your, you know, it should make offers, whether it's your business cards, your, uh, your notepads, uh, the way you answer the, your phone. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything to, to, to make these offers on stuff that you, you're already doing anyway. Right, and like another another really good one is your email signature. Put on your signature for a free over the net home evaluation, or for and for a free list of foreclosure properties. Uh, put two or three benefits, then say visit CraigProctorSite.com, whatever that. Yep, is. your your home sold or will buy it. For more information, right. how you can benefit, visit you know GuaranteedHomesale.com. Right. So there's, again, if you get into the Learning Center and the Success website, there's lots of examples of these. I know for classified ads, I know, Craig, if you get into the, I know you're working on your, your online Leap site that has the ad generator in it. Um, people can get in and they can generate ads and, again, lots of sources for that. Um, leveraging your listings. If you've got listings, put some sign riders, simple sign riders on them. Um, what, we, what we typically are seeing, you know, people that are doing sign right, sign, view more about this home, text one two three four two five 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 zero zero zero. People, what we're seeing is people are generating one or two extra leads a month for each of the sign writers they've got. So again, that's well, that's I, I love I love the text messaging because you're capturing their phone number, and and right. that's uh, one of the reasons I love the hotlines as well. You know, when someone visits your landing page and they go away, you don't have their phone number. Someone calls your hotline or they respond to your text messaging sign rider, you've captured their phone number. Right. So then the, the, the next, again, progressing, once you've done the simple things that are inexpensive, now we can look at doing, okay, but maybe we're going to set up a Google pay-per-click campaign. And I know Christy does that for most of the people in the coaching program with the, the, who got the, the special at the show. We're doing the, the Google pay per click for you. Okay, so Christy will manage, Christy or our management team will manage that for you. And it's a, a great way to progress through that. Once you can get that going, now we might be looking at, okay, setting up a, a custom listings portal, setting up the HDX. And the, the benefit of that is now we can provide specific hot list pages. We can automatically fulfill those requests so we don't have to go searching for properties for people. We can see what people are looking at, develop our buyers and waiting list. But again, you don't need to have that going to like a lot of people wait. I know that this in some places getting that set up take, takes weeks or even a couple of months because of paperwork and you got to deal with the board and there's, there's setup time and it, but a lot of people don't wait. You don't need to wait for that. You've got the unbranded site. You can. You've got all these campaigns. Um, we can. We can do all of these things up and get to this when it's when it's time. Um, don't let that hold you up. And then obviously there's lots of other things we can do. We can get into doing face, Facebook. We can try banner ads. Um, we can start partnering with our affiliates. Uh, thing like I'm find a mortgage broker that we can do joint marketing with. Um, how would you like to get other people to pay for your website and pay for advertising it? And that, again, is something that you can set up with your title company or your mortgage guy or your uh, real estate attorney, whatever that is, movers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, find ways to partner with them to, to, to generate more. So, again, there's lots of information on all this stuff. All the resources that I provided at the, at right off the top, um, in the success website learning center, the uh, the blueprint, the campaign checklist, all this information is on this on this page at successwebsite.com forward slash coaching call dot um, How are we doing on time? Uh, I've got more time. Uh, do you want to uh, take some questions? Yeah, maybe Christy, you can. You have some common questions we're getting from the the queue or. Or, or just common questions that you get all the time into the office as well. Um, mm -hmm. you, you must, you must have, you know, like your top ten things that people don't understand. I do, I do. I think that uh, there are a lot of questions usually around domain names and how that fits into the marketing strategy. Okay. Well, the the, the big thing with domain names is 
if you're running, I separate in that there's two reasons for it, okay? Typically, we're going to have a, a branded site. You're going to try and brand with either your name or the name of your team or something so that if people go looking for you, they can find you. And I know CraigProctor.com, we're going to find Craig. One of the things we found with Craig Proctor over just through testing is a lot of people actually misspelled it and spelled it with an ER at the end instead of an OR at the end. So all we did was we registered a second domain name, just parked it on the same site. So, so if they typed in either one, they would find Craig's site. And that basically got us some extra traffic every month. So that's what you do with the branded. The, the less branded homepage, you gotta remember most people are never gonna go to that page. They're never going to go to yorkregionhomesales.com. What they are going to do is they're going to go to the individual campaign landing pages. So the stop renting page, the home eval page, the um, distress sale page, all of those pages are where they're going. So what we want to do is if, depending on what we're running our ad, so if we're running an ad to, we're running a, an offline ad, a newspaper ad or a postcard, what we want to do is use a domain name in those that's going to do two things. One, it has to point to the correct landing page. But the other thing it should do is we want to use what I call a benefit-rich domain name. So we want that domain to support the ad. So if, if we go back to the – let me just bring – we go back to our example here. If we're running this distress sale – classified postcard, we want to use a domain name, bankdistresssale.com. So if, and you can see that the domain name itself conveys the same message as the ad. If the rest of the ad disappeared, would it generate leads? Bankdistresssale.com? Probably. Uh, you might also do something like auroradistresssale.com or torontodistresssale.com or chicagodistresssale.com. There's lots of ways to find a domain name that works. But again, we want to make sure there's a benefit-rich domain name in that ad. So not only does that, now we, we want to use a unique domain. If we were to run this ad in two different newspapers, we might we would likely have two different domain names so that we could separate the tracking would know, okay, which newspaper did it come from? And that's how we can distinguish between, okay, that paper's good and that paper isn't didn't work as well. Um, similarly, when we're running postcards. So again, the benefit-rich domain name, onlinehomepricing.com. Again, it could be an area. And again, we may try a couple of different versions of this. So let's say we wanted to try, and this I know this is the third or fourth different version we used of this card. One of the cards we originally tried, I believe, had Craig's picture on it by mistake. And that was one of the ways we found out that the less branded advertising actually worked better. So... Again, we can if we were going to test multiple cards, we would use similar. We might have onlinehomepricing.com. We might have homeevaluation.com. And again, it's lots of domain names. We can always find a permutation that will work in your area. If you've got any questions about one, by all means, call us. Now, the difference is if you're running an online ad, so let's say we're running as an example, we'll use the this rather ineffective banner ad. But you'll notice we don't need a domain name in an online banner ad, because what happens in an online banner ad is people actually just click on the ad. So we'll know the source just from where it, the, the, the link is set up in such a way that it tells us what the source was. So we don't have to register individual domain names for all of our online ads. So you don't have to do that. As an example, with Google, you might have three or four different ads going and 100 keywords and um, a bunch of different things. We don't need, we'll set up tracking so we know which of them work, but you don't need a unique domain name for each of those because of just because the online ads, we can include the tracking code in the link itself. So, yeah, that, that's very important to, to understand. A lot right, of so members I, I get think confused with that. People, if, if you're running a, like, like Craig did, in, when Craig was doing a lot of the advertising you were doing with different on, offline ads. So I think. I think, if I remember correctly, you had about 30 different domain names, and three or four of them were for distress sales, and three or four were for home evals, 
And we would rotate those every month, depending on what ads you were running, to give us a distinction between a campaign and a media and a different newspaper and a different postcard so we could track all the sources. Um, as we got into doing Craigslist ads or Google ads, we didn't have to register domain names for those. You know, uh, Steve, I should auction some of these off. I've still got them, but I've got some really cool domain names. I'm going to read you some of my domain names. AreaHomesalesReport.com AvoidCostlyMistakes.com BankDistressHomesales.com BankDistressSale.com um, FastHomeEvaluation.com uh, get expired to call you dot com. Um, online home evaluation dot com. Onlo online home pricing dot com. Over the net home value dot com. Quick online evaluation dot com. So there's uh, there's five right there. Five for the online home evaluation campaign. Okay, so I'll read those again to you. Fast home evaluation dot com. OnlineHomeEvaluation.com, OnlineHomePricing.com, OverTheNetHomeValue.com, and QuickOnlineEvaluation.com. So that campaign was so powerful for me. I had five different domain names uh, for that online home evaluation campaign to help me track exactly what was working the best. Right. No, that's great. And yeah, we. I think I got a couple ideas for those domain names. We can. We'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, okay I'll, Christy, you know, the, 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 best, the, the best one, Christy, I believe my best domain name of all time is onlinehomeevaluation.com. That's generated that's a lot it. of leads for you. I know that. That's a good one. That's a good yeah. one. Let's see. Who's who's going to be the highest bidder here? Any any takers? <laughs> Steve, I'll uh, sell that one to you for hundred grand. <laughs> okay, let me let me think about it. I got another. I got a couple ideas for those. So let me. We'll talk. People are actually typing them in to see where they go. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What, what other questions we got, Christy? Uh, we do have a couple questions just regarding um, like some of the best media outlets to use when you're just getting started. Like, what's your best chance at getting some quick leads? fairly inexpensively okay well there's there's a, there's a lot of different examples um, both in, in in all the documents I provided the blueprint mm -hmm. as an example the blueprint.pdf page there lists a whole bunch of the stuff here um, different different places to go different classified ads postcards etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, the the main page itself the um, let me just bring up the list. If you're looking for sort of an order to start, again, the, the rollout that we sort of went through gives you a pretty good idea of where to start. Um, certainly the cross-promotion stuff because it's, it's free and easy. Um, classified ads aren't very expensive. Um, Google pay-per-click is really good because we can do all the work for you. Um, so as part of that, Christy and the team, we can set up the stuff you take all the guesswork out of it. We set up Craig's best campaigns. We'll give you the best chance of succeeding with that. So again, that's that's another good one. Um, as that moves forward, then you may decide, okay, Facebook might be a good one to try. Um, and again, Facebook is one that we we set up Facebook ad accounts all the time, and and can manage those for you as well. So there is a pretty good progression that. The document should give you a pretty good idea. There's lots of ideas for different types of media and specific websites. Um, when you get into paid links and banner ads, um, look for sites that are local in your marketplace. So if you've got somebody, a local newspaper, that promotes their site a lot, um, that may be a place to, to go call them and find out where is there opportunities to put little text links or different things in there. Um, if you find a... I don't know, any, but any, any local links you see that are promoted a lot, if you find a, a, a restaurant or a car dealer, um, talk to them about, okay, maybe we can do some, uh, I'll, I'll put a link on your, on my site, you can put one on yours. Um, I have a couple, I have a couple suggestions too. I know sure. that in, in Canada, Kijiji has, uh, has turned out to be a very inexpensive way to generate traffic and leads. So mm -hmm. little classified ads in Kijiji. 
Uh, Craigslist is difficult just because of the, the link issue. You know, you can't put a hyperlink into your ad and traffic sometimes is an issue. But right. if you do a search for online classifieds in your area, you will find sites that are very similar to Craigslist, like Olix is one of them. It's an online classified site. Uh, there's all sorts of them out there, and usually they're very inexpensive. I mean, you may not get a ton of traffic, but you may. Like, there's no harm in trying. So, yeah, if you're looking for media outlets that are local, similar to an on online classified like Craigslist, just do a search, online classified, and then type in your area, and, and you'll find some sites. Right, like local newspaper, on. like a local newspaper probably has a local local classifieds. And, and the nice thing about those is because they take may take you a little bit of work to find them, most of the other agents in your market aren't going to do that. I know I know at Craig, at one point when Craigslist became sort of the everybody was talking about, okay, we put our ads in Craigslist and we hyperlink them and do all this stuff. Now mm -hmm. that you can't do the hyperlinks, it doesn't work nearly as well. But at, at, at one point, at, at initially, when Craig first started doing it, you could, you could be the only agent in there, and your ad, you'd post your ad, and it would hang around for a week um, and still get traffic. As it got way too busy, there might be 100 agents in there, and your ad might only be effective for a few minutes, and that, that became a bit of a problem. So, but again, if you search around locally, there's lots of different local sites you'll find Again, local classifieds or or different things, and that little bit of work and effort um, can be your best traffic sources. Very inexpensive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's that's great great suggestion, Christy. Okay, um, why don't we take a couple more questions we can get to? Sure. I mean, it's been pretty quiet. I think everyone's just sort of hanging out and listening, and wants to buy Craig's domain names. Mm. Uh, so let's see. I think that um, I think we've pretty much gone through all the questions, actually. Okay. So I don't know if you want us to finish off with anything specific. Um, you, okay. Well, let me ask Craig. Is there anything that we've missed, or you think we're <coughs> what? What should we? Or we just wrap it up? Okay. Here? So so um, okay. I, I'm listening to all this and. Uh, uh, I've got some good information, but I think of questions uh, a week down the road, a month down the road. How? What is the best way to reach you guys to get help? Sure. Okay, well, the simplest way, go to successwebsite.com. Um, always in the, all our sites, the top right corner, there's our 1-800 number, 1-800-361-9527. Um, don't hesitate to give us a call. Um, is there a... Special extension for coaching members, Christy? Uh, you can, extension 1200 will get you through. So, okay. doll extension 1200. Okay, awesome. Remember, don't forget you and can book your one-on-one. -on -one what's, what's your extension? 1200. Uh, Christy, what's your extension? <laughs> 12, yours is 1200? Okay. There you go. Um, the one-on-one -on -one action calls, again, you can call the 1200, book, book those calls. We can answer your questions there as well. Um, Anything we can do to help, um, you know where we are. Certainly, you can get in touch with us. I know Christy does the, lo the, the weekly Thursday Jumpstart webinars where we cover specific topics. Again, um, great chance to get on and, and ask your question to Christy on those. I know uh, so lots of opportunity there. Um, you mentioned, Christy, with the, the Jumpstart webinars. There's a notification system. How do people make sure they're getting those notifications? Uh, you might want to just make sure that when you log into your command center and you go into the learning center that you've you've opted in for that. Just to be sure, if you if you're not getting those notifications, send an email to jumpstart at successwebsite.com. We'll make sure you're on the list. So I'm gonna post that email into the chat section as well. And uh, if you send us an email there, we'll we'll make sure that you're on the list and you're getting notifications. Awesome. So jumpstart at successwebsite.com. Yeah. Okay. Well, as I said, I know there's a lot of resources we provided today. I know it's it's really hard to get to all this stuff in an hour or an hour and a half. Um, but what we've tried to do is sort of lay out the steps. 
and it, it, it is a progression. We understand that. It isn't something that's going to – Rome wasn't built in a day. Um, Craig's business wasn't built in a day either, and it, it took time to, to generate those winning campaigns, to, to understand, the, to make sure all the tracking is in place. But today I've tried to give you the path and lay out the, the, the key, key bricks along the way, and I think if everybody follows that path um, – with our help, and obviously Craig and all his teams around, and we're around, um, we'll help everyone get to where it's where it's successful for you. Okay, awesome. All right, cool. Well, look, uh, thanks for doing this uh, today, guys. Uh, remember, uh, you can reach uh, Christy, who uh, you know basically runs the place. I'm I'm trying to get your raise here, Christy. Thank but, you. Uh, I appreciate extension that. extension 1200. Uh, you can talk to. Uh, directly to to christy at that extension and <laughs> we we want this to work for you we really want you to to succeed with this and uh and we'll let everyone get back to work and go sell some houses okay thanks everybody okay thanks everybody <laughs>